Hey guys, it's John again, and I'm playing Baby Bunny from, where is this, Portugal. The Baby Bunny from Portugal. And we have a perk defense in this one. I'm just going to play a very, very calm continuation. I like to do this oftentimes in lines where my opponent's just kind of giving me the center. So he's going to go like e5, queen c7, that sort of plan. I'll put the bishop on e3. Maybe bringing the knight to d2 is okay here. This is sort of weird, but like if e5, maybe I'll go knight c4. He probably will play e5. I like the knight on c4. It will help pressure um, d6 and e5. So if I if I do it now though, maybe his idea is knight takes e4 to subsequently fork those two pieces. And I could also just play f4. So I'll do that. Seems fine. Okay, so he's being very flexible with his pawns, trying to get b5 in, I assume. But I can play e5 here, can I not? Asking his knight where he wants to go. He says, I want to go to d5. Okay. Bishop f3. So my knight can't get to c4 anymore. But that's not a tragedy. Hmm. Okay, let's play bishop f3. Let's gain a tempo on this pawn. Maybe rook c1. Just having in mind c4. He could play b5 now. Does rook c8 instead. Hmm. Okay, I'll take his a6 pawn under observation. Also maybe prevent him from playing b5. There's a lot of tension in the center. Okay, like now I have a reason to actually play this move though. Because when he plays e6, he's weakening d6. So if I have a good reason to um, try to induce a capture on c4, then I can get my knight in and take on d6. Okay, now I want to get the move order right. If I take on d6 right now, he takes on f3. That's not so good. Um, if I trade bishops, he has to take with his queen. I take here, and I'll just be threatening knight d6. Seems like the most forcing thing. And what does he do about that? Almost has to sack an exchange. Or just give me the D pawn. Knight takes C4 is also just really good, I think. I'm just deciding between good moves. Okay, I'll just do Knight takes C4. It looks like it keeps a little more tension. To get the queen. It's nice that my bishop's helping to defend c1. Oh, he can just do that. Oh, of course. Okay. My move order was kind of dumb. But, uh, okay, whatever. <laughs> I still like my position. I just think I should have taken on b7 first. That would have been much stronger. Then I would have won a pawn clean, at least. So I think he'll move his queen now. Queen, I predict queen b8. I took this way so that my queen attacks f7. And let's see. Okay, I'll just come in with the knight. This looks plenty strong. Maybe I can get my queen into c6 too. Just making sure he can't sacrifice on e5 favorably. His position is pretty darn cramped at the moment. So he may be considering some sacrifices like that. I wonder if I'll ever have the idea of rook c8 to deflect his rook and then go take that pawn on f7. That would be nice. Actually, it, might, it almost works at the moment. Because I could take the pawn and then pick up the loose knight. e6 would be weak. I might have knight f7 coming. This is not an easy position for him. 
has a real tough time moving. Okay, let's just do this quickly. I'm not yet sure that something like rook c8 will work. So best to just make a simple decision. I can also go after his knight. Like queen c6 is always an option. It's good to play a move like a5 quickly, make him think. I'm catching up on the clock and just forcing him to do something. Yeah, so he does go for this sacrifice. I didn't think this worked because... Hmm. Maybe it actually does, though. So if I take, he takes the knight. I was going to play just queen d1, but now I'm seeing he has rook d8. Bishop c5, but he can pile on that knight. Hmm. Well, regardless, I kind of have to take it. Now I have to figure out what to do. I noticed that after queen takes c5, I might have a skewer. So there's that. I just want to go somewhere where... So queen f1, queen takes c5, bishop c5. Uh, I don't know about that. What is going on? Can I just play queen f6 and go for mate? What's wrong with that? Queen f6. Ah, he has knight g4. Super annoying. Knight g4. Hmm. My clock is ticking. Ah, okay, I gotta make a decision. All right, let's just do this. This might be bad. This is like, this is very complicated now. Yeah, he chose a good move. But wait, I can go here. And if he takes d6, I have bishop d4. Problem is I have no time. Bishop d4. Because if bishop h6, I would have he would have queen e5 as a defense. So I don't want to do that. But now, now I think he's in trouble. I have to be so careful, though. Keep thinking. Give me time to uh, <laughs> figure out what to do. He's going to sack his queen, I predict. So he kind of has to. There's no other choice. He's going to sack his queen. Yeah, and then Time. do that. I'm just going to go for his A-pawn. I'm not even going to try to trap his knight. I could potentially play to do that. I might be moving very fast from now on. Okay, his knight is like nearly trapped. It's gonna cost him a rook. Well, he just disconnected? Really? Okay. <laughs> well, he didn't want to try to blitz me out. This would be hard though with 17 seconds. I mean, if he plays something like knight c3, I was gonna go here. And I'll probably win his rook for just uh, my pawn, but. You know, trying to break down four pawns plus a knight in a tight cluster with that amount of time. I might have like roughly, you know, 10-ish seconds left. That wouldn't be easy. So, for example, like this here, like king g7 or something. And we're looking at a scenario like this. Yeah, I'm sure white's winning, but <laughs> this, this would actually take a while OTB, I think, to, to win this position. He plays, I don't know, something like that. So he has like one weakness, it's F7.
So, all right, I, I just missed an easier win, I'm pretty sure. We'll go back to the beginning and have a look. So, I mentioned that against some of these, um, some of these openings where uh, you're gifted the center, I just like to play calmly and, you know, a lot of, like, the, the critical line against the perk is definitely the minority attack, or not the minority attack, the Austrian attack, which is f4. And then after that, go knight f3, and white tries to use the center pawns to often threaten an early e5. That's definitely the critical line. But thinking about the mentality of the player on the black side here, they probably played against the Austrian attack a number of times, and they probably know more theory than you, too, unless you're a very well-prepared player in this line. Because that's how it usually goes. Like, people always prepare their black openings better than their white openings. And if you have, like, a specialty opening that's not very popular, like the perk, I feel like you're just going to be extremely well-prepared for the sharp stuff. I know I am at my specialty lines. Like, in the Scandinavian, like... I know I have an advantage just right off the bat if they go down the main line because I probably played that main line like you know a hundred times and they might have played it like five times just because it's not a popular opening. So if the opening is like a second tier opening like the perk, um, perk's not a terrible opening, but you know you don't really see many top players playing it. Then I think it makes sense to just play something sensible and follow general principles too. You don't feel like you have to, you know prove a theoretical advantage against it. I like this move, knight d2. Whoa, that was a bad arrow. Knight d2 and menacing the knight to, to c4 idea. If he had played e5, I would have played knight c4. And as I said, I like the pressure here. My knight is no longer blocking my f-pawn, so I can potentially play f4. Maybe I will force him to take on d4, f4, and I'll get good pressure on d6. That'd be a scenario that I would like. So he played b6, I played f4, he played a6. This seems slightly extravagant to me. I think the position worked out okay for him. Here I played bishop f3, hitting the pawn. And now I tried to organize c4. I didn't pull the trigger on c4 right here because when he just takes and I take back, he'll play queen b8, he'll just drop back. I didn't really see that there was any huge edge there. So I played queen e2. Actually, I was thinking at this moment that maybe b5 was better for him. Even though he played b6 relatively recently. I mean, the move a6 on move 10 was designed to prepare b5. This is kind of a mini minority attack at the moment. Because if I take, he takes. Yeah, he has an isolated pawn, but he has total control over the a file. The c file is half open for him. I can no longer play c4. So I think that deserved attention. Let's see if the engine agrees. Yeah, b5. Gives like rough equality, c3. So he played rook c8, I went here. Hmm, computer does like c4 immediately. I think it just prefers my space advantage. Queen b8. He has almost like a hedgehog formation. But the computer likes my space edge. It's saying trade on c8 and then play queen b3. Maybe f7 is a little loose. Like if he takes and I take with a knight, there's ideas like e6 or knight g5. He's not quite secure yet. Oh, that's a cool line. If e6, then d5, and white can try to explode the center. That looks fun. Hmm. So queen e2, and I'm going to turn the engine off because there's one thing I want to check soon. So queen e2 in here. So now I played c4, and I mentioned, like him playing e6, that was a little bit of an inattentive move because now when I go c4, uh, d6 is always weak when my knight lands on that square. Actually, I think he shouldn't even take the pawn. Maybe he should go queen b8 right away and try to stay solid, like take and take here. It's kind of ugly, but it might be his best shot. And for the moment, he has all these points protected. 
and I took here. There are a couple moments in this game, this being one of them, where I spent a lot of time like knowing my position was really good and knowing that I was probably close to winning. That, that happened at the end, and it almost cost me the game. So that's a tough situation in Blitz. I often struggle with that. It's like your position's like too good. Like if I only had one good option, of course I'm going to play it right away. But here when I had two good options, like taking and also knight takes c4 immediately, I was like, ah, which one gives me the larger advantage? Like I have to figure it out. But in Blitz, that's that can be a poisonous mentality for your clock. So I think if I take on b7 and then take here, this is much better because now I'm attacking his pawn. And if he advances or takes, I can play knight d6 and then forking. I don't think it gets that complicated either because he has to move his queen. Like rook takes c1 is not check, so he can't do that. I would just take his queen. So let's say queen b8, and then I take probably with the knight, although I don't think it really even matters. And if he tries to grab like d4, I have knight e7 check, and I'm escaping with the full rook. So he's got to take back and then, you know, just something like this. Or fe5 and white's clearly winning. So I, th I thought, like, if I went for this line that um, he'd have to do this and just give up the d6 pawn and try to do something. But this is also very, very good for white. So I think I erred slightly by playing knight takes c4 first. Let's see. Yeah. Engine says trade and then take and then queen d5 and then take and huge edge white winning advantage if I play it right. Also his a6 pawn is weak now and I'm about to get full control over the c file. Good stuff. Okay, I'm going to stop the engine again because there's one more point a little bit later where I felt my position was very, very good. So this happened... Don't think I have anything better than taking immediately. Just seeing if like knight takes e5 makes more sense. I don't think so. I like taking this way because now the f7 pawn is more vulnerable for him. He moved his queen. I jumped into d6. Take. Take. This is all fine. Okay, after b5, I played a5 fast just as a clock decision. But um, maybe there's something more direct. Like I really wanted to go for rook c8. Rook c8 is a pretty cool idea. Take and then take. Check. And then I've got all these like mating, not mating necessarily, but stuff is brewing around his king. I take, I'm threatening his rook. He can't go to c1. It's nice for me. If he plays rook d8, he just loses to knight f7, or queen takes d8, and then knight f7. So he'd probably play rook f8. And this was like the type of position, if I had more time, I'd try to like assess it. But Maybe white's just good doing something like this. I mean, material-wise, I'm doing awesome. I'm threatening knight f7, too. I'm probably, like, better but not winning yet. Maybe he goes queen a7 or something and guards this square. So that's one line that, if I had more time, I would, I would think about. So it's pretty forcing. And also queen c6. Queen c6 is a good option here, too. Just attacking his knight and attacking his weak pawns. That might be the most sensible thing to do. Hmm. Yeah, the computer likes taking and then queen c6. Wins me at least a pawn. This b5 pawn's a goner. So I played this, and then he took here. Well, for that matter, could he try that on the previous move? Uh-huh, apparently he could. Take. Take and knight takes. Yeah, I always thought this was fine for me. I saw this line, but I thought it was fine for me because of queen d1, defending the knight. But he just goes rook d8, renews the threat. It's no good. Okay, so I seriously underestimated this line. Queen f6, like, almost works too. With the idea that f takes bishop h6 with mate threats. But um, the knight g4 reply is always really good. That's a nice rejoinder that... I figured out like halfway through my next big think coming up and uh, yeah, if I move my queen, he takes, computer thinks I can draw somehow. Okay, I have to go for an elaborate draw. An elaborate perpetual Check. like this. Check. <laughs> yeah, and I think Check. I could maybe try to do something, but it's probably just a draw. 
I guess I could take on c8 if I really wanted to try to win, but... Hmm, so that means that a5 is not a good move for me. It may also mean I should take with the bishop here instead of the rook. Yeah. <laughs> you can go so far down the rabbit hole. Does that mean that, you know, knight d6 is a bad move or that f takes e5 is a bad move? Apparently not. This is, this is good. I should have just taken with the bishop, though, according to the computer. That also keeps more pressure on f7. Because now, if he does this, yeah, I take, take, and I can swing this over to a3. Aha. Uh -huh. Right. And that was not available if this were to be played. Because my bishop is blocking the queen. It can't go get over to a3 to defend the knight. Hmm. It's cool stuff. So b5, I just tried to restrict him with a5, and he played a great move. Bishop takes. Yeah, and you see how long I thought here? 45 seconds on that move, roughly. And then another minute plus on this move. I knew there had to be something that kept the material. And actually, I looked at this line, like that, and just going after the rook on f8. Why did I reject this? Was it because of knight d3, I thought? Yeah, and then take on c1. But I guess this is also good for me. He has massive dark square weaknesses. But now it's complicated. I mean, the amount of time I had left on my clock is, is, is not enough to really work through all these complications. And the queen f6 move, again, this looks awesome because of takes and then bishop h6. But I saw that he had knight g4. My coordination is thrown off. My queen is going to be overloaded. Like if it comes back to d4, trying to observe both pieces, he just takes and yeah, I'm much worse now. So I did play that, and then he came in here, and then I went there. Yeah, so queen d4 was maybe a good option too, but yeah, I like this move. Bishop d4, and now I'm winning. Check. He has to sack his queen. Yeah, and this is just a technical win for white. Wow, some crazy complications there at the end. That got fun, though. So he should have just settled for taking the knight, apparently. Yeah, and I would have played bishop c5. But, uh, again, with the time situation, this might not be the most clear-cut win in the world. My king is also exposed, too. All right, fun game. So I think I won all three of my games today that I recorded. So good day, good Friday. Uh, hope you guys enjoy this and hope everyone has a good weekend. And I'll be back tomorrow, which is Saturday, with some more videos. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.